I always seem to come back to Anchor because face it or not, they make a quality product, but my question goes beyond that. Let's find out if this Anchor Nano 3 30 watt power adapter can beat out the competition or even itself. The 30 watt chargers tend to be above the range of fast charging a phone or tablet and on the edge of charging a laptop. They likely won't power a laptop during use, but should be able to top up the charge overnight. Given the size and space, it makes 30 watts an interesting place to be. Specifically, we will look at the efficiency, power quality, cost, size, and features of each adapter and compare. If you're new here, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live, as well as the super button. Thanks to my current patrons. First, we will take a detailed look at one of the power adapters. 30 watts is a very interesting category of power adapter. I think it might be the ideal power level for compactness and number of features. The Anchor Nano 3 is going to be followed through the testing process. First, let's take a look at what we get. The Anchor is back in the old packaging here, blue and white. The box comes with a user manual where they do list some of the numbers, always a nice touch. This being a single port device, we don't have to worry about port sharing. When looking at the actual adapter, it is first off really small and has folding plugs to go with that compactness. The size of this adapter is the first thing I noticed. It has the usual requisite marks we expect, so a TUV safety listing for the US and Canada market, and we can also see the Department of Energy 6 mark on the product. Anchor generally meets these requirements, so no problem, and I expect to be the same here. Upon plugging it in, we can see the idle power consumption is nice and low and extremely noisy. Not audible noise, electrical noise. The total harmonic distortion, or the extra harmonics that aren't at the power line frequency can cause some extra power dissipation. They're high, but the current is also so low that it doesn't have an impact on the power. This is expected for an ultra small power adapter and very typical for adapters in this range. The current moving is so low that this number is subject to some variability. This adapter has lots of modes of operation. It can do fixed output voltages per the USB power delivery specification. The USB-C port can deliver 5, 9, 15, and 20 volts. This adapter also has an 11 and a 16 volt PPS mode, or a very variable output voltage mode for charging more efficiently. These modes have up to 30 watts of output power, which is great. Note, this adapter does not have a 12 volt output. This is the one voltage anchor seems to always skip. This is okay though, as it isn't explicitly required. The advantage of having a 20 volt port means this can charge nearly anything you throw at it. It might not be the fastest, but it can charge a lot of devices, which is a good goal. This power adapter has a good strong output voltage during the testing process. As part of the testing process, I have several pieces of equipment that I use that are hooked up in specific ways to minimize interference of the devices and the test setup to get the most accurate information from the device being tested. I need to make a specific video on this topic at some point. If you have suggestions or comments on this or anything else, leave them Below. When taking this power adapter up to overload, the point at which the adapter safely shuts down to protect against a fault or damage to external devices is 38 watts. After the fault is removed, the power adapter recovers to 5 volts, so no plug or unplug required to reset the device. Nice. As expected, power adapters in the 30 watt range do not have power factor correction. It is possible, but it is deemed not reasonable to include for both size and cost reasons. Somehow your $5 LED light bulb has a PFC circuit though. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. These lines should all look like sine waves, the yellow line, but instead we have large peaks which means a large spike of current is being used at peak voltage and then nothing over the rest of the cycle. This is inefficient when consuming AC power, so sometimes a power adapter doesn't behave as it should. Here I have the AceFast 32 watt power adapter, which is one of the recommended adapters to look at from the comments, and it has a major issue with it which puts it in a hard stop category. I will be checking the others to see if they do this as well. On the overload condition, this adapter let me turn the power up to 75 watts, way over the rating of the cable and the power adapter. This will melt cables and cause issues. Scary stuff. Steer clear of this one. A lot of the adapters share almost identical packing methods. Some have extremely lightweight packaging though. Here are the weights for the adapters and packaging. The Anchor is surprisingly light and the Ace Fast is surprisingly heavy. In general, if you are building a weight budget, 50 to 75 grams sounds about right. Obviously, you have to add the USB cable. Check out my video on that, linked in the description. The fuel branded adapter is expensive, but I picked it up because of the transparent casing. I wish it was a little more see-through, but we can see the general layout and clearance between things. The transformer has the extra wrapped wires, and they can certainly cram a lot into a little space these days. Okay, the pleasantries are out of the way, let's get into some data. First up is power quality score. How do these perform overall? 
I'm going to skip the detailed performance data on these ones. In reality, they are all fairly close to each other, essentially a range of 13 PQS points. And in this lower range, the reproducibility is about plus or minus four points. So these are all on top of each other. They all use the exact same topology for a power converter and essentially identical technology. Yes, the chip used is different item to item, but electrically near identical. Spare the Google, that is doing something different. So a 90 is better than a 77, but it isn't as different as you think. They're a long way off the scale maximum of 200. Next up is weight. The new anchor adapter really shines here. This thing weighs almost nothing, and skipping dollars and going to size, it is also the smallest 30 watt adapter compared here. I didn't include them all though. The Amuzone gets some mention here, but it's nearly as tiny dimensions though, and into the price. This one is cheap. 11 US dollars. There doesn't appear to be much correlation between price and performance. On to the safety listings and other bits. These power adapters mostly had the same overload condition. I never tested the Anchor Nano 2 overload actually. It was one of the first adapters I tested. Most of these are good here with a few exceptions. The Bassius fell below the required efficiency with this new GAN 3 30 watt adapter. This is certainly sample variability, but still below the line. The Slintinto, seriously who names these things, uses far too many watts at idle and also has no safety listing at all. The Acefast, with its near non-existent overload protection, scary, and a couple have Japanese only safety listings, which is less than ideal, but still the work was put in at least. These adapters have different feature sets, and I took that into account for a rating on these devices. The voltages in the PD mode, extra ports, modes of operation, foldable plugs, and also PPS modes are all pretty important when figuring out if one of these is going to be the compatible charger for your needs. And I also shoved them together in this chart. In reality, they're all near the same, but a few stand out. The slid Tinto has the most features, but my suspicion is that it is one of the dangerous adapters and based on no safety listing gets counted out. Stuffing in features doesn't get you a win if you cheap out on the important bits. The new anchor is in the middle here, but it moves up over the Nano 2 by adding folding plugs. When taking a look at the idle graph for these power adapters, they are basically all in a cluster at the bottom. They all have low power factor and low performance, all getting zeros for idle power quality score, except one, the Google adapter. It is bigger, more expensive, and pretty good here. The other outlier is a bad example, too many watts. So my final grade for these power adapters essentially puts the cheapest one at the top if all other things are equal, which they basically are. If you want the smallest decent performer, the new Anker 511 Nano 3 30 watt isn't a bad option, but there are better options. Here the graph separates out the 30 and 33 watt options. You can see the Ace Fast and Slintinto are off the chart. I have to say the conclusion on these devices is that there is much conformity in the industry, a lot of copying of features and functions. Some standards exist to determine voltages and limitations on efficiency and power output, and for the most part, these adapters take advantage of these offerings and stick with the guidance of those methods. When they are all the same, there isn't a lot to say. The winners here have to be the Syncwire and the Amuzone. The losers have to be the Slitinto and the Acefast for one reason or another. The Anchor is actually a lower performer in terms of its power quality, which it appears was sacrificed in some way to make it one of the smallest and most compact power adapters out there in the 30 watt category. So if that is all that matters, Anchor is the choice. If you can tolerate a little more space, you can improve slightly, and I mean slightly, on the Anchor. As usual, I'll put affiliate links in the description if you see something you like. They may not be chart toppers for the category, but when comparing with other figures like weight, size, and general features, the tables turn a bit. I'm still all for the Google, Belkin, and Anchor Nano 2 adapters though. The Syncwire and Amuzone took me by surprise. Thanks for watching. Next week, I'm gonna be looking at a light bulb. It says it's smart. I wonder if it has any ideas for the channel. I made a small dent in my bin with the 11 new devices this week, so next week, something totally different. It will be interesting to take a look at how the lighting product does for power usage, and we'll give it a teardown too.